years, right? Just need my privacy. I need time to heal. No, I don't want to sign up for it. Because I think we don't know somebody personally, but your phone was so sweet. The two things that always catch your attention is one, when somebody gets uh, separated or break up, you wonder what happened. The other one that gets my attention is when somebody dies unexpectedly and you see a random rest in peace post, but they don't say how they died, and that's really all you want to know. They'll be like, you know, we need prayers for the family on Instagram. And you're like, but how did he die though? So you start reading all the comments, and nobody's saying shit, just a bunch of prayer hands. You start Googling the name, nothing pops up. You start texting your friends, and then one person will step up and make the comment we all want to make. Well, what happened? And they get killed. Motherfucker, you can't say that shit. That is very disrespectful to the family. I'm like, well, that's what the fuck we all want to know. Because listen, if you're going to get on social media and ask me to pray for somebody because they died, I got to know how they died. Because my prayers are different depending on your death. I don't have one prayer that covers all the deaths. Like, if you're in a car accident, that's an accident. You get 100% of my prayers. You know? Lord, I'm not going to question your timing. I'm just going to miss my friend. Sounds like my grandpa. Amen. Now, you out there robbing motherfuckers, and you robbed the wrong motherfucker, and you got God, that's a different type of prayer. You don't get the car accident prayer, you get the robbing motherfucker prayer. Lord, uh, look, I understand that my friend took that free will a little too far. If you let him into heaven, be careful, he steals a lot, okay? <laughs> I met him in seventh grade, he stole a hoodie out of my locker. Eighth grade, he stole lunch off my tray. He's a thief, Lord. So, Lord, if you let him into heaven and one day you look at the pearly gates and you're missing the pearly, He's probably got it. All right, amen, ish. <laughs> That's the problem with today, too, man. You don't know, we don't know what we're allowed to talk about anymore as comedians. We got the thing called cancel culture, because it's real, but it's not real. We got a bunch of people that they see something on social media they don't like and try to cancel the comedian and told the joke and never go, never gonna pay to see that comedian anyway. Because we're not the same, we're different. We're not allowed to talk about certain shit, but that's the good shit. Like, we're not supposed to talk about guys with dicks that don't want their dicks no more. A slow crowd. Can't talk about girls with no dicks who want a new dick. Bruce and Kate can fuck the game up. They put that dude to cover Wheaties whole time and want to be on Fruity Pebble. It was starting to fall out. Because we're different. Men and women are different. We've got to stop acting like we're the same. We're completely different creatures, you know? We don't want to say this, but some jobs men should have and some jobs women should have. Stop hiring these people because you got to meet a quota. Like a dental assistant should be all women. I don't want to walk in the dentist's office. I got this thick finger motherfucker right here putting his goddamn hand locks in my mouth. I want tiny ass fingers at the dentist's office. Plus, he's standing right here trying to numb me up. My mouth's open. Come on, bro! So if you a dude and you a dental assistant, quit. Nobody wants you there. Nurses should be all women. Hey, you a dude, you a dude, and you a nurse. Cause I'm just saying, you go to the hospital, you're sick. And when you're sick, you want either your mom, your grandma, or your wife to make you feel better. Not your fucking Uncle Daryl. So if you a dude, and you a nurse, quit. Nobody wants you there. Cause I had knee surgery last year, right? Rick Strip knee surgery. I'm sitting there, and I got anesthesia, I'm kinda out of it. And I luckily had a female nurse, and she kept, I could hear her, but I was kind of out of it. And I couldn't, I couldn't eat or drink until I pissed. For some reason, I couldn't piss. So I could hear her say, Gary, Gary, you can't eat or drink until you release, you gotta piss. So we gotta put a catheter in you. Are you okay if I give you the catheter, or would you prefer a male nurse? I woke up. I said, why the fuck would I want a male nurse? And I'm right back to sleep.
<laughs> Nursing homes should be all women. Now, men, we can landscape and we can work in the kitchen. We need to be going to the old people's rooms. Because I'm just saying, if I reach the age of 90, and my family puts me in a nursing home, I don't want to do walking in my room every day. I want to look at a little pussy on the way out. I ain't gonna do nothing with it, I'm 90, I just want to look at it. I'm gonna be a dirty old man too, dirty as fuck. Hey, nurse who walks in my room. Man, this is scary, I'll shoot myself. 15 minutes in, and Mr. Derrick, I'll shoot myself again. Oh. You did not shoot yourself. I'm still wet for it. I'm saying whatever I want when I'm 90. Oh my God. What are you gonna do? Write me up for sexual harassment? I'm gonna see some nurse take me to court. I'm fucking 90. He sexually harassed me. He was saying shit that was inappropriate. Who? This man over here. I'm in a goddamn wheelchair slobbering. <laughs> Whatever I want. Every nurse that walks in my room, I ain't got time to flirt and get right to the goddamn point. As soon as she walks in the room, Mr. Gary, what you learned to fuck? <laughs> now I'm nine years old. I understand. If I ask that question to 100 nurses, 99 are gonna say no. I just gotta meet that one. <laughs> Daddy issues. <laughs> Men problems. Probably our first day on the job. All the other nurses, it's almost like an initiation. Oh my god, room six, Mr. Gary, he just buzzed. As soon as he walks in, <laughs> first day? <laughs> what you laughing to fuck? That's very important, my friend. I don't think you should be saying things like that. I don't know what she's talking about, she ain't say no. <laughs> I'll put you in my will. You can have everything I have. I pass away. All my family shows up at the lawyer's office. Everybody rubbing their fingers together. Ooh, let's see what daddy left us. My lawyer walks in. Hey, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming to the reading of Gary Owen's Last Will and Testament. Huh. Interesting. Not sure why there's so many people here. Uh, according to the will, uh, Mr. Gary left everything. Homes, cars, bank accounts to a Cheryl Jackson. I was like, who the fuck is Cheryl Jackson? <laughs> Cheryl comes walking in, how you doing? I'm Cheryl. <laughs> it's good meeting you. Cheryl, who are you? Oh, I'm sorry, my name's Cheryl. I was his nurse and I like the fuck. <laughs> well, you guys are a fun crowd. Uh, so, <laughs>
Mexican on the show. Long soldiers, me and Felipe. <laughs> This is my first time at T-Mobile Center. I was talking to Felipe back saying also his first time. So we gotta show him some love when he comes up here. So with that, can you see it ready for your first comedian? We got legends. We got DL. Cedric. Eddie Griffin. But we also got a Mexican. I got an email this morning from a fan that wanted free tickets for the show. And he was like a big fan. He was Felipe, is there any way I can get a free ticket for that show? I've been going through a bad time. My mom died from coronavirus. My wife was diagnosed with lupus. My brother was murdered in Chicago. I just want to laugh and your comedy makes me feel good. Is there any way you can give me some tickets for free? I wrote him back and I said, listen, man, I don't feel comfortable bringing all that bad luck to my show. <laughs> I don't think God is finished with you. <laughs> I don't want God to mistake me for someone you care about. <laughs> I can't have that guy here at the show laughing right there by himself. Then a tornado fucks us all up. And we're like, fuck that guy. I went to a gender revealing party, and when I got there, the woman told everyone she got an abortion instead. <laughs> and then the balloon blew up and sprayed blood at everybody. <laughs> I was hit with a uterus. <laughs> what if you do go to a gender revealing party, and when you get there, they tell you, nah, man, we're gonna reveal who the father is. And I love that. <laughs> oh man, I remember I got a girlfriend pregnant and my first son was in high school and I remember she telling me, Felipe, you're gonna be a father. And I was like, fuck, I didn't have a girlfriend yet. <laughs> she told me, Felipe, I'm, I'm pregnant. And I said, wow, that's fucked up. <laughs> she said that I'm pregnant now and you're gonna raise a baby by yourself. I used to be a horrible person. I used to sell marijuana to my son's mom's new husband. And then I would take his money and give it to her as child support. <laughs> that was my 420 pyramid scheme. Excuse me. I remember one time he came up to me and said, Felipe, I feel like quitting. Come on, bro, think of your family. <laughs> I'm married, and I wear, I'm married, uh, I wear my ring wherever I go to let women know that I am not looking for a serious relationship. <laughs> and you know, if you, if you wear, if you, when you wear a ring and you tell people you're married, all the good women stay away from you. They, they respect that. Every once in a while, you might get a drunk woman, yeah, but are you happy right now? <laughs> Titty hanging out. <laughs> you gotta let people know you're married, though. You don't wanna have an argument in the morning. You never told me you were married. I took your Instagram. You're a father. Uh, I didn't tell you uh, I was married. You didn't feel my ring in your mouth when I was choking your ass. <laughs> when I was putting it in your ass and your mouth all night. And you you didn't hear my phone vibrate all night? 
Just don't cheat, guys. Don't fucking cheat. Especially like if you're like 45 and older. What are you doing cheating, old man? What are you doing, gray pubes? They catch you cheating that old? It's fucking embarrassing, man. It's like the whole family knows. They're walking up to you at gatherings. What happened, Grandpa? You know, like, not, not no more. <laughs> Just don't fucking cheat, guys. Also, if you're gonna be a, a cheater, don't buy a fucking dog. Why put that dog to all that anxiety? <laughs> he smells you when you come home. <laughs> He's like, where are you? That's not my mommy smell. <laughs> also, don't cheat, guys. Don't, women don't cheat like we do, man. Women, women cheat for keeps. Like, men, we're more like cash and release. Now, like, women cheat differently from us. They cheat with a better person. Someone with a better job. Taller, lighter skin. <laughs> That's something we will never do. Cause man, we cheat really down. <laughs> now when you catch your wife cheating, it's always a better man. You really can't be mad at her. You have to be proud of her. <laughs> you have to look at her and go, wow, babe, you did it. <laughs> you made it out of my mom's house before me. Even your kids know it's better. They're pulling you away. Go, Dad, go. go. We're going to be homeowners, Dad, go. When a woman cheats, nobody really knows. It's very down low, like only if her whore friend at work knows. I'm <laughs> reading. Well, men cheat, everybody fucking knows. All the Chinese restaurant knows, oh, no, go for that. All the Mexican restaurant, oh, no, mamacita. The mariachis take advantage of you, oh, no song for the no lady. Man, when we cheat, everybody fucking knows. Man, you ever cheat so much that your mom and dad know they're gonna have an intervention for you? What are you doing, Miko? You gotta stop cheating. Our house is in her name, too. <laughs> We're about to lose everything. I don't want to go back to Wichita. <laughs> I love it here in the big city. <laughs> it's sad when we cheat, man. We never think about how many people we hurt. Like, man, we cheat really down, man. When we get caught cheating, our wives are more embarrassed than fucking hurts. So like, oh my God, he was fucking that lady that sells hot dogs. I was like, oh, dear. No wonder that bitch gave me a free Fanta this morning. We hurt everybody, man. We don't even care about who we hurt. Our kids are crying. Mommy, don't let daddy leave. Mommy, you're not gonna cheat no more, mommy. I drew a picture of daddy not cheating no more. <laughs> this is daddy saying no to big tits and flat asses. <laughs> I was caught cheating. Both girls showed up to my house. They looked at me and said, what are you gonna say for yourself? I'm like, I don't know, checkmate. <laughs> you didn't catch me, I wanted to get caught. I was tired of the lying. The running around. One day we're all gonna laugh at this at the T-Mobile Center. <laughs> but now let's have a threesome. <laughs> I'm out of shape, man. I can never have a threesome. This is not a threesome body. This is a tell nobody. <laughs> if I ever get a chance for a threesome, I'm gonna have a meeting with those two girls. <laughs> Listen up, ladies. One of you ladies might not get a turn. <laughs> So 
so big a number from one to ten. <laughs> the pretty one said, 17, you win. <laughs> I'm getting older, man. I used to go, I'm getting older. I went to, a, I went to the doctor for a health checkup. He said, Felipe, I'm gonna need a stool sample, a semen sample, a urine sample, and a blood sample. The doctor, what do you want? My underwear right now? <laughs> I got blood and shit together. <laughs> I was smoking a joint outside, man. I don't know that. I guess that's people don't like I guess I, I, was, I, was in, I was in Kansas. I was smoking a joint, and this lady walks up to me, Sir, we can smell your marijuana over there. Well, you owe me 20 bucks, bitch. <laughs> you fucking freeloader. I'm drug free, man, but I, I used to do a lot of coke, man. I love cocaine, man. I remember one time I was doing cocaine off a woman's breast. When I sobered up, I was in cocaine, it was her deodorant. <laughs> she was laying down, I saw a big white line, and I was like, you fucking greedy bitch. I mean, you ever been pulled over for drunk driving? When you were drunk driving, you were coked out. You come with a car paranoid, like Jeff Dunham with no puppets. <laughs> What's the part of it, officer? Sir, why were you speeding? I don't do speed, just coke. <laughs> At this speed one time, I broke into 37 houses. <laughs> I didn't steal anything, I cleaned them. <laughs> I, I don't do coke no more, man, because I can't do coke like a normal person. Like you, sir, you do a line, you want to start a business, not me, man. I do a line, I want to break into a small business. A family business. That's the thing with coke, man. With coke, it's different from marijuana. Marijuana, you fucking look stupid and shit. You do a, a line of coke, you look intelligent. <laughs> you start throwing out business ideas, yeah, bro, we gotta collaborate, bro, we gotta collaborate. <laughs> like if somebody would have taken a shark tank at that moment, I'll close that deal. <laughs> yeah, man, I just need $200. And I'll give you 90% of the business. <laughs> but that's not gonna happen. What's gonna happen is my mom's gonna catch me going through her purse. She's gonna look at me like I let her down. What are you doing? What are you doing? Listen, man, you wanna be a fucking partner or not? <laughs> I love being married, man. My wife is from Ohio, from Dayton, Ohio. Blonde hair, blue eyes. I made it. <laughs> My wife and I, we watch a lot of porno together, adult movie pornos. But it's porno from 1910, vintage porno. Like black and white, no fucking sound. I love it, I'm fucking masturbating. My wife is next to me playing the piano for the movie. <laughs> I gotta tell that bitch to slow down. Not playing so fucking fast. Why are you playing so fast? I don't know why I go this far, I'm trying to impress with that, but I don't have a big penis. My penis like right here, shit. Because I'm Mexican, we have a lot of foreskin in our body. Because I'm Catholic, so Mexican, we have a lot of foreskin. Because when we die, they put our foreskin over our body. And we go into heaven like tamales. Because we're the chosen ones, motherfuckers. <laughs> the first time my wife saw my penis, she thought I catfished her. <laughs> she said, you told me you were nine inches. Yeah, but you gotta stretch it tonight. <laughs> it's not all hard, but it's still all thick. <laughs> when I get hard, it looks like a sweater with short arms. <laughs> Like, I don't fuck, I paint. 
Sanchez. <laughs> they call me Pablo Pitazo. <laughs> you having a good time? <laughs> Somebody told me outside, like, I, I remember I was with this woman and she told me, you look like that guy from that movie. And I was like, what? Aquaman? <laughs> She said, nah, Moana's dad. <laughs> I'm not a good looking guy, man, but I have a bad uh, I'm fun. There's a, lot of old, there's a lot of older men here with young women here. Big hand out for you, man. Showing up here tired. A lot of my friends, they date young women, you know. I don't like young women. I like women my age. I got a guy like one of my age, man. You have sex with a young woman, but after sex, she wants to go hiking. <laughs> she wants to go shopping. I don't, I don't even do that with my kids. You fuck a woman your age, after sex, you look over at her age, you want to take a little nap? She's already ahead of you. <laughs> Sleeping, holding her purse. <laughs> Set an alarm for 20 minutes. <laughs> Now, when I was young, I always wanted to have a threesome, man. Two girls, one guy. Now, I just don't want to disappoint two women at the same time. <laughs> I don't want to be laying between two women and one of them like this, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess you were next, huh? I was looking for you. <laughs> you didn't get a wristband? <laughs> My bad. <laughs> you having a good time? Yeah. I, was wearing, I was wearing a black and white striped t-shirt last night, and someone said I look like a fucking fat Beetlejuice. <laughs> I said, say it two more times, bitch. <laughs> My sister dyed her hair blonde, but she's fucking darker than me. Whenever she pushes my father on the wheelchair, the little like Storm and Dr. Xavier. I'm standing there like a fucking fat Wolverine. Thank you. Where's all the best kids at? Be careful, man. They might make us clean afterwards. <laughs> I got into a car accident, man. You ever been in a car accident with someone else that doesn't have car insurance either? <laughs> you guys just look at each other. <laughs> so you wanna just take off or what? <laughs> Alright, let me just pick up my bumper. <laughs> If you don't have car insurance, just grab any paper out of your car. <laughs> it could be your eviction notice. <laughs> just hold it like it's insurance, man. Get insurance. <laughs> but make sure you take out the white paper. Once you know, I came out with a McDonald's receipt, man. <laughs> the worst accident for me to get into will be with another Mexican. So we'll try to out Mexican each other. Hey, it is un fuck you. Sana Barbish. Mara fuck it. I start speaking English first, hey man. Your insurance, the carese, the carese. I fix your car right here. You know me. That's the Mexican seal of approval. Beautiful, man. There's, there's, there's a lot of new immigrants coming out from other places, not Mexico. El Salvador, Nicaragua, Guatemala, Honduras, coming into America and stealing Mexican jobs. <laughs> we gotta make America great for Mexicans again. <laughs> you watch the news, they tell you 2.5 million illegals came over from Mexico. How are we gonna stop this? 
Simple, you gotta stop them while you're counting them coming in. You keep counting, they keep coming. Push up the white people out. Give it up for white people, man. Nobody can do that for white people, ever. They're here, they're fucking smart. White people always have money, man. You know why? Because white people never send money back to Ireland to anybody. White people never work hard to send money back to Germany. White people have plans, man. Like, as soon as their kids turn 18, they already have a plan for them. Listen, Skyler, Gunner, Thomas. You're fucking 18, you gotta make decisions. You're gonna go to college or get a fucking job. Dad, I wanna be an actor. You got 30 days to make it. <laughs> Mexicans and blacks will have a 45 year old rapper still living at home. 55, still teaching. Like white people, they deal with mental illness better than we do. At least they acknowledge it. That they'll warn you. And that's my uncle Ron. Stay the fuck away from him. He's a Vietnam vet. Do not wear black pajamas around him. Do not come out of a tunnel. He'll fuck you up. Mexicans and blacks, we have crazy people in our families. But we just give them a funny nickname and move on. Hey, who's that crazy fucker? I was my uncle Twilight Zone, bro. <laughs> he hasn't been the same since the Gulf War. And fuck, bro, he wasn't even there. <laughs> and I just saw that, I saw that documentary on the airplane of Jeffrey Dahmer. Did you guys see that shit? I know, right? I didn't know he, I know he was killing people, but I didn't know he was eating them too. That's how I knew he was white right there. <laughs> he was eating people with all spices and seasoning. <laughs> hey, I'll eat a dick, but cook it right. <laughs> cut it up, cut charcuterie in. That's why Jeffrey Dahmer could have never been Mexican or black. That house would have smelled delicious. Sorry, excuse me. It would have been a, a, a line around the block. Excuse us. Any more leg? <laughs> Any more dick? Any more titties? <laughs> there would have been hipsters standing in line. Um, is this organic? Is it organic? <laughs> is it organic? Well, it's a fucking organ. You figure it out. <laughs> I was, a, I was at a, a taco truck in Inglewood, California. I paid for a burrito, and right after I paid for my burrito, they robbed the fucking taco truck. <laughs> Mexican lady, she gets up scared. She said, we got robbed, no, 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 we got robbed. I know, but where's my burrito, though? <laughs> Nobody took tortillas from me. Nobody took beans and salsa. <laughs> if you don't make your burrito, you're robbing me now. I know you don't have my change. But now I want extra guacamole for two dollars. And a large horchata. <laughs> Who knows what horchata is, my boss? My wife from Ohio doesn't know what horchata is. She asked me, what does horchata taste like? Well, I'm Mexican. It always tastes like horchata to me. So. <laughs> You're not Mexican. Horchata to you is going to taste like cinnamon toast from cereal. <laughs> yes, thank you, miss. What's up, people? This shit is fucking, you're making me fucking dizzy, homie. They got me going around in circles. 
I remember I performed at a place like this one time where it was round like that and and that side was empty. And then like the, the, the fucking thing came turning like this. And I would go to the side where there was nobody there. So what, uh, sir? You were there, so are you a bush man or no bush? No pressure, go to your head. Bush or no bush? What the fuck? I'm all about the fucking bush. I like Henry Bush. I like when a, man, a woman puts on her underwear and the hair sticks out to the underwear like that. Like an eyelash. I like when a woman puts on her underwear and it looks like a tennis ball with a thong on it. Cause you're behind me, you're behind you, you can feel the friction. <laughs> and you can see the electricity. <laughs> Someone tried to break in, you zap them. <laughs> but not everyone should shave, man. I don't know, not, not men should shave. I shave my bush, fucking big fucking mistake. I was showing my wife, what do you think? She said, it looked like a baby seal crying on the rocks. <laughs> Really, bitch, baby seal, that regular seal? <laughs> not a sea lion, a walrus, a killer shark with a long neck. It should be me self conscious. I think the best love, the best sex you have with your wife is makeup sex. Right after a big fucking fight at the mall. Right after her cousins jumped you. <laughs> like you're fucking and her dad is fixing all the broken windows. <laughs> but you gotta know where to start makeup sex. I always started too soon, you know. While she's still crying on the floor. <laughs> you fucking piece of shit, who Then the cops show up. <laughs> Fuck the cops show up again. How you doing, officer? Sir, why is your face all scratched? Oh, my wife threw a cat at me. <laughs> but we were in love now. We're gonna make it work. <laughs> How you guys doing tonight, Mike? We get you guys anything like a watch, maybe a flyer. Or a bigger sign. What time the show start? Eight. It's just walking at nine. Fuck it. Just walking and we're part of the show. <sighs> like you were here early, Harvest. Shit, you slept here, ain't she? <laughs> As you take a shit on the way here, man. I went to a restaurant, a sign spread for employees only. So I put an application, took a shit, and quit. <laughs> I met this woman last night, she said, I'll sleep over here, I'll go, you can have no sex. I said, all right, tomorrow morning we'll have breakfast, you can't eat no food. <laughs> I gotta buy new clothes, man, I gotta buy new clothes. I saw a woman earlier, and she showed me a photo of her and I in 2018, and I'm wearing the same fucking sweater. <laughs> I went to a thrift store and I took, put down my jacket and someone picked it up and tried to pay for it. <laughs> that lady said seven dollars. I said, motherfucker, I gave you 20 for my jacket. Well, that joke sucked. Let's not ignore that shit. <laughs> when a joke doesn't work, you know what it feels like? It feels like you're watching a stripper and then she falls and dies. <laughs> and you're like, fuck. She fucking died, bro. I'm gonna get my 20 back. <laughs>
Sunrise DVDs. Shouts out to your airport, the new airport. Yeah, I'm late. I thought I got rerouted. That old airport was something special, boy. Damn. I thought you like was in a lineup. Get your security and then you just stuck. Got a big glass window and nothing but a mini 7 Eleven there. Some people walking by. I always felt like I was on the first 48 at the old airport. Shout out to you guys, you were the original city. The first 48. <laughs> you guys started the whole goddamn show. It was Kansas City and Memphis every goddamn Thursday. You got some snitches in this goddamn city.